Hello, everyone. Welcome to Advancing Adventism. So we're going to be looking at something from Ellen White, uh, particularly the statement she makes where she says, the spirit of criticism unfits men. Now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking to see what does she say it unfits men for? And it's not what you might think. Now, we're just going to look at one paragraph from an article of hers published in the Signs of the Times, May 26, 1890, paragraph one. It's the very beginning of the article. And even though we're just going to do the one paragraph, I will have the link to the whole article in the description. And I very much encourage you to go and read the full thing. It's such a wonderful article. You will really be blessed. I read it earlier this week, which is what prompted me to make the video. And um, I just really wanted to share the blessing I received with everyone watching. Now, as uh, you may know, a lot of what we deal with on the channel are, you know, related to doctrinal points, the pillars of our faith, and we build upon them and that sort of thing. But the other thing that we do a lot of on the channel is we really focus on the principles by which we should operate, both in life in general, but primarily we kind of focus on how we should bring those principle bring bring those principles into the life when dealing with um, investigation, studying the scriptures, and um, just manifesting Christ's character in the life so that we can hasten his return. So anyway, with that said, let's get into the article and let's see what she says. Now, I will start by reading the paragraph and then we'll go back and we will consider it sentence by sentence and really work on digesting it to make sure that we're benefiting from the lesson she's wanting to pass on to us. She writes, we must have greater wisdom than we have yet manifested in regard to the manner in which we treat those who in some points of faith honestly differ from us. It is unbecoming in anyone who claims to be a follower of Christ to be sharp and denunciatory, to stoop to ridicule the views of another. The spirit of criticism unfits men for receiving the light that God would send them, or for seeing what is evidence of the truth. Should the Lord reveal light after his own plan, many would not respect or comprehend it. They would ridicule the bearer of God's message as one who set himself up above those who were better qualified to teach. Okay, so that's the full paragraph. Now let's go back and let's consider the first sentence. She says, we must have greater wisdom than we have yet manifested in regard to the manner in which we treat those who in some points of faith honestly differ from us. So that's the context for this whole paragraph. And it has to do with how we relate to other people regarding points of faith that we maybe ha have different views on, right? And this isn't just to be thought of as um, applying to people outside of the SDA faith. It's within the SDA faith as well. Because we all know that within Seventh-day Adventism, there's differences in views. So when we are interacting with people who have uh, differences in views on some points of faith from how we might hold those same points of faith, then this is instructive for how we should behave. We should have greater wisdom than we have yet manifested in regard to the manner in which we treat those who in some points of faith honestly differ from us. Okay, so then she continues and she says, it is unbecoming in anyone who claims to be a follower of Christ to be sharp and denunciatory, to stoop to ridicule the views of another. Okay, well, let's consider this for a moment. Um, now, one thing that this is not saying is it's not saying we just need to automatically agree with whatever someone says, even though it might be different from um, what we're really convicted on. You know, it's it's not saying we just agree that everyone's right, you know, with even while holding different views. What it's saying is those who may differ on certain points of faith, 
when we come into contact with them, if we're a follower of Christ, it would be unbecoming for us to then interact with them in a manner that is sharp and denunciatory or to ridicule their views. Doesn't mean we can't try to um, discuss the views and to talk about, you know, the evidence for or against and that sort of thing. Doesn't mean that at all. It's just how are we going about things? And I'm sure we can all relate to um, what she's describing here. I mean, whether we've been on the receiving end or the giving end, we've all seen it. Um, even just on social media, you know, you see it quite a bit on social media, Facebook, YouTube, that sort of thing. People are just really harsh with one another often, not always, obviously, not always, but it's pretty common to be sharp and denunciatory. So s- someone says, um, I believe XYZ, and another person says, well, that's stupid, or that's crazy, or they just dismiss it, or that's false. You know, even if you just say that's false, just dismiss it um, in a real, you know, kind of sharp, denunciatory way. Uh, that would be wrong. That's not the way followers of Christ should interact with one another, even if there are differences in views or ridiculing someone. Um, that's the other thing that we. We really should not be doing if we are promoting or, you know, professing to be followers of Christ. We should not be uh, acting this way. And if you think about it, just think about how that type of behavior would be perceived by others. And is that benefiting them? Is it benefiting you? Speaking of benefiting you, look at the next sentence. She says, the spirit of criticism unfits men for receiving the light that God would send them or for seeing what is evidence of the truth. Now, before I go any further, I just want to say, you know, when she says the spirit of criticism unfits men, I mean, this should go without saying, but I'll, I'll still say it anyway. Uh, that goes for women too, right? It just unfits us. Okay, so the spirit of criticism unfits us for receiving the light that God would send us or for seeing what is evidence of the truth. That's what she's saying in this context. In this statement, she's not talking about how it would impact someone else. And she's not talking about um, whether or not it would, you know, win people over to our view and that sort of thing, even though those are all fitting things to have in mind, it's important to be aware of the fact that wrong behavior and wrong witnessing could very well turn someone off. I mean, who's going to be won over by something that is sharp and denunciatory, just very dismissive of their view without really giving it a candid hearing? Um, or to be ridiculed for their view, you know, that that's not very winsome, right? But again, that's not what she's focused on here, right? She's focused on how the spirit of criticism impacts the person manifesting the spirit of criticism. And what she says is that it would unfit us for receiving the light that God would send to us. Now, that's a really big deal. Not only would it unfit us for receiving the light that God would want to send us, it would unfit us for even seeing what is evidence of the truth. Now, here are some examples from the life of Jesus where we can see that when people were manifesting the spirit of criticism, they did become unfit for receiving the light or for seeing evidence of the truth. And I'm using Jesus as an example because I'm sure we would all agree that he was completely undeserving of people manifesting a spirit of criticism toward him. So, for example, um, the Pharisees accused Jesus of being a Sabbath breaker, right? He healed people on the Sabbath and he even you know, walked distances in order to heal people on the Sabbath, um, taking grain off of corn to eat. His disciples did that, you know, so they were accused of being Sabbath breakers because 
Jesus and his followers observed the Sabbath in a manner that was different from how the Pharisees understood um, the law to demand the Sabbath to be observed, right? According to their view, on their uh, view of, of how to keep the Sabbath, Jesus and his disciples were lawbreakers. And because they didn't manifest the right spirit, because they manifested the spirit of criticism, they were unable to see the truthfulness of Jesus' message, and they did not receive the light that he offered them. Now, if they didn't continue in the spirit of criticism, it would have been different. But if we continue in the spirit of criticism, we will remain unfit to be able to receive the light that God would send us or to be able to see what is evidence of the truth. Now, here's another example from the life of Jesus. The followers of John the Baptist, not all of the followers of John the Baptist went on to then follow Jesus, even though John said that one was coming after him, right? Followers of John the Baptist were used to seeing John fasting a lot and really being restricted in his diet, whereas Jesus and his disciples really didn't do that. And they were accused of being gluttons and not being pious, right? And because they chose to manifest that spirit of criticism toward Jesus and his disciples, they remained unfit for being able to receive the light that Christ had to offer them, and they rejected it. They stayed uh, in, in their sin, and they didn't see the evidence of the truth. They did not accept Jesus' message. Now, there's more examples that could be given, and if you think of more examples that um, can help us to really contemplate these principles, feel free to mention them in the comments. These are the types of discussions that can be really, really fruitful. But anyway, we'll just continue on here. So those are a few examples of how the spirit of criticism can make the person manifesting that spirit unfit to receive truth from God. Now, she goes on to say, should the Lord reveal light after his own plan, many would not respect or comprehend it. And I'll just pause there and we'll just take this first clause. Notice that she says, should the Lord reveal light after his own plan, many would not respect or comprehend it. And I apologize for the wind. I'm just going to keep going, though. That's it's very windy. And, and some of you may know my husband and I live in a yurt, so they're very loud. But anyway, should the Lord reveal light after his own plan, many would not respect or comprehend it. Now, here she's pointing forward to a potential future situation where the Lord does send more light, sends revealed, uh, should send light revealed after his own plan, right? Now, if you do go and read the whole article, you'll be able to see by what she says further on, she explicitly says that we should expect more light to be sent, right? So this isn't conjecture here. It's just, I've read the full article um, and you'll be able to see that if you go and read it for yourselves as well. But so there's this future, uh, this potential future scenario where if the Lord uh, should reveal light after his own plan, if we are indulging in the spirit of criticism, many would not respect or comprehend it. You know, it makes us unfit for receiving the light and for receiving or for seeing the evidence of the truth. So this is very, very serious. They would ridicule the bearer of God's message as one who set himself up above those who were better qualified to teach. Now, these are all things about how it impacts the individual manifesting a spirit of criticism. A spirit of criticism unfits us for receiving the light that God would send us or for seeing what is evidence of the truth. Okay, now here's why this matters. We know about the passage in John chapter 8 where it says, you will know the truth. You know, Jesus is speaking. He says, you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. 
It's talking about being freed from the bondage of sin. And it's knowing the truth that sets us free from that. But if we are indulging in a spirit of criticism, we won't know the truth and we won't be set free. That's really the bottom line. That's why it's so important. So as we consider the fuller um, message, the counsel that Ellen White is giving in this paragraph and in the whole article, let's keep this in mind that it matters a great deal how we respond to the counsel given by Ellen White on this matter. In order to be set free, we need to know the truth. And in order to know the truth, we have to manifest the right spirit. With all that said, I want to thank you for watching and I want to invite you to subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Feel free to share the videos with someone you love and check out some of our other content. There's a couple of examples right there. Um, we look forward to hearing from you and uh, we just wish you very many blessings. Shalom. Thank you.